So we've seen how to use the maximum likelihood estimator to come up with a best estimate for alpha, the uh, exponent in the power law. But what about x min? How should we estimate x min? So let's think about this. Recall that the challenge is um, that we all, we're only seeing power law behavior often over a, a certain range. And so x min is a lower cutoff for the power law behavior. So here we see definitely some curve. So that's not a power law. And here this looks nice and straight. And we'd like to choose um, the best x min. And there's a trade-off here. Um, on the one hand, I want to choose x min really large so that I'm definitely in the power law region. But if I choose it too large, I'm throwing out a lot of data points, and that's going to make my fit less good. On the other hand, so then you might be tempted to move this way to get more data points so you'll get a better fit, but you don't want to get so many that you start getting into this curved region. So we're looking for some principled way to, to um, perform this trade-off, something that's better than just saying, mm, kind of look straight about there. So here's an approach for doing this. And again, this is described really clearly and nicely in the paper by um, Closet, Chalizi, and Newman. So here is the idea. So what we do is we systematically try many x-min values. And so you'd probably want to start with the first data point, and then the second, the third, and so on. So you're not sampling at random. Try them all. And for each, for each x min, find alpha hat. So once you choose an x min, it's no big deal to come up with the estimate for the exponent. And then what we want to do is, in a sense, choose the best alpha hat. Sorry, choose the x min that gives the best alpha hat. So choose that gives the best alpha hat. But I need to say what best means. What criteria can we use to determine the best alpha hat, which in turn then will determine our x min estimate. So here's the idea. Once you have an alpha hat, you have a model for the data. And um, I guess I'll call this p of x is a x to the minus alpha hat. And I could also then write from this form a continuous prob uh, cumulative probability distribution, capital P. We also have the data itself. And I can use the data to um, also come up with an empirical um, cumulative probability distribution. So. Let's see, maybe I'll denote this M for model. And this for data. So the point is, I now have two cumulative distribution functions. One of them I would form from this model. And the other I would form from the data itself, as we did with that um, simple example where, where I had 10 data points and we made a graph, in green and orange, and so on. So now I've got these two. And what I want to do is find the alpha that minimizes the distance between um, these two distributions. So find alpha hat that minimizes the distance between the model and the data. So basically, we're trying to find the model that leads to the best fit. And this is how one would measure it. 
The last thing I'll need to do is specify uh, what distance function to use. And um, a standard approach is to use what's called the Kolmogorov Smirnov distance, uh, which I'm uh, going to be a coward and not write out. Discretion is a better part of valor. So the KS distance, Kolmogorov Smirnov. is the maximum for all x greater than or equal to x min of the distance between the data and the model. So you just look to see where the cumulative probability distributions are, uh, th where they're the most different. So for all the x values greater or equal to than x min, you say, okay, how different are these two cumulative distributions? The largest of these differences is the Kolmogorov Smirnov difference uh, distance d, and that's what we would use to figure out um, the best fit. So again, we systematically try x min values. We choose the one that leads to the best alpha. The best alpha is the one that leads to a model that's closest to the data. So that's a systematic procedure for um, estimating x min. And the last thing I want to mention is what if you wanted some error estimates on x min? So this just gives, gives a point estimate, tells us how to figure out what um, x min is. What if we wanted to come up with an error estimate? Then it turns out um, the easiest thing to do is to bootstrap so we can get error estimates. via bootstrapping. And so very briefly, uh, that would work as follows. You'll have your original data set, x1 up to xn. You would create a synthetic data set from that by resampling with the replacement. And then on that, with that uh, synthetic, that bootstrap data set, you would do the same procedure and estimate an x-min. Do that 100, 1,000, 10,000 times, obviously on a computer. And then you'll get a whole range of x min values. And depending on how far spread out those x min values are, um, uh, sorry, how to say this, the more spread out those x, val x min values are, the greater the uncertainty in x min. So you can plot, make a histogram of those x min values, and figure out um, what the 95% confidence intervals are. So that's if you needed error estimates. That would be the way to do it on bootstrapping, via bootstrapping. Um, here, there's theory that can give you um, error estimates. One can show that this estimator is um, normally distributed. So you can use that fact to figure out your uncertainties for this. Um, again, this is all explained in much more detail in the Closet Newman and Chalizi, or Closet Chalizi and Newman paper. Um, and there is software available, um, some R packages, maybe Python, maybe MATLAB, I forget. Um, that will carry out this analysis for you. But the bottom line is that there is a principled way of estimating x min where this thing becomes sufficiently straight. It's done by this iterated procedure that's fairly straightforward on a computer. Um, and that's the best approach um, that I'm aware of for estimating x min, the lower cutoff for power law behavior.